morning. Good morning. Yeah. yeah, well, how are things? Good, how are you? Yeah, pretty well, thanks. So what I've been doing is I've been like cutting off where uh, before. It, before it starts it's moving. So yeah, okay. when it does the the mm -hmm. ellipse uh, and circularization. And it's um, impressive because it's, I mean, five pixels. The goal of this project is to understand both the physical mechanisms and the biological mechanisms uh, driving bacterial biofilm formation in a variety of diverse microenvironments. The bacteria within a biofilm adopt this radically different lifestyle from their freely swimming counterparts. They even excrete this matrix of biopolymers that protects them from all sorts of things, including harsh environments and the host immune system, and particularly antibiotics. So bacterial biofilms can be up to a thousand times more resistant to antibiotics. The biofilms are absolutely ubiquitous. They can be found in almost every environment on this planet. And they can be either bad or good, right? We think of biofilms mostly with respect to chronic infections. Um, but they also play a large role in things like food safety and water security. Uh, but they can also be beneficial. They can help in water filtration, waste management, wound healing. So due to their significant medical burden, there's a lot of research going on on biofilms. But the part that I would say that we understand the least is the very first step. The reason for that is because it's technologically challenging. Watching that first cell transition requires having high resolution details of a very brief and rare moment in time and space. So the aim of this project is to finally develop the tools to be able to catch these nucleation events and to understand the physiological changes of the bacteria uh, as they form a biofilm. Um, what happens at 500, for example? Hertz? Yeah, let's see. Is it still stable? Yes. Wow, it's pretty impressive, actually. 50? You <laughs> try? See? Yeah, it's still there. We just uh, we don't quite have enough light. There is this open question. You know, we learned a whole lot during the COVID pandemic that aerosols are able to transmit viruses, but the same is actually true for bacteria, as is the case for tuberculosis. So our hypothesis is that maybe biofilms play a role here, protecting the bacteria, either in the sense that the bacteria within are able to form a nascent biofilm within the aerosol or the only bacteria that survive this transit are those that were emitted already in the biofilm state. So this is an electrodynamic balance. We have an aerosol droplet that enters and it's levitated by the electrodynamic balance. And we want to see how the bacteria within, how they react and how they behave as the aerosol evaporates. I think the favorite part of my work is starting a brand new experiment. So for instance, right now I'm currently building a microscope and I cannot wait for the day that I'm able to, to put a sample on the microscope and see for the very first time what comes out. So this is a, a first version of a digital holographic microscope. Uh, so there's bacteria swimming in here. And then the hologram, which is going to be collected via the objective and bounced off of this 45 degree mirror and eventually onto this camera. The hologram is just the interference of uh, the light that interacts with the bacteria and the light that doesn't interact uh, with the sample. You know, in physics and classical mechanics, impulse is the change in momentum of an object. And for, for me, I think this is a, a, a nice summary of where I am in my career. And what's special about impulse science is that it's going to support this project for five years. It will allow me to really take a step back to breathe, to imagine the larger picture that encompasses all of the things that we want to tackle, and focus on the science 100%.